welcome to the next lesson for trig. So today we are going to learn about right triangle trigonometry, which you guys have learned a little bit about, but we're gonna change it up, of course, just a little bit more. And we're gonna start learning some basic trig identities. Okay, so let's start with some basic trig identities. We have two different kinds, reciprocal identities and quotient identities. Reciprocal identities, we've been talking about how some of the trig functions are reciprocals of each other. So instead of referring to all of the trig functions in terms of opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, things like that, we're going to start referring to them in relation to each other. So for example, we know that sine and cosecant are reciprocals of each other. So we can say that sine equals one over cosecant theta. They are reciprocals of each other. This is just your definition of a reciprocal. So sine, we know equals opposite over hypotenuse, but we also know that it is the reciprocal of cosecant. So we can say sine equals one over cosecant. Likewise, cosine and secant are reciprocals of each other. So we can say that cosine equals one over secant theta. Tangent and cotangent are reciprocals. So we've got tangent theta equals one over cotangent theta. And now we can rewrite them as the flip. So cosecant equals one over sine theta. Secant equals one over cosine theta. Tangent equals one, or cotangent equals one over tangent theta. These are just your properties of reciprocals. They equal each other. So sine is one over cosecant. Cosecant is one over sine. Now, for the next one, we can change it even a little bit more. We're gonna talk about tangent. And tangent, we can write as sine divided by cosine. Now think about this. If we were to go through a triangle, so here's our triangle, and here's our theta. We know that we'll call this y, this x, and this r hypotenuse. We know that tangent of theta is your opposite side over your adjacent side, which in this case for this triangle will be y over x. We also know that sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, and cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So those would be the relationships for sine and cosine. Now, what this identity here is saying is that tangent equals sine divided by cosine. Well, let's try that out. We have sine equaling y over h, cosine equals x over h, so opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, and we know for a fact that tangent equals opposite over adjacent. So can we rewrite this and get the same thing? So sine, we are going to substitute in with y divided by h, just what we said it equaled over here, divided by cosine, which is x over h. Remember, when you divide by a fraction, so we're dividing by this fraction right here, that means we multiply by the reciprocal. So we can take that and say this is actually h over x and multiply. Our hypotenuse cancels out and we are left with y over x, which is just what we said it equaled here. So we can see that tangent does in fact equal sine over cosine. They are the same thing. So it's just a new way to think of tangent and you guys need to start thinking of tangent in this manner because when we get into our identities from here on out, you're gonna wanna think of tangent as sine over cosine instead of opposite over adjacent. They're both correct. It's just gonna make it a lot easier to work with the identities of thinking as tangent as sine over cosine. One thing that you can think of is that sine and cosine are your basic, most fundamental trig functions. Every other trig function, so all of the other six trig functions can be rewritten in terms of sine and cosine. And we're going to refer to that quite a bit. We're gonna change things into sine and cosine as we learn more. Okay, so we saw that tangent can be rewritten as sine over cosine. Now remember, cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. 
So that means that we can rewrite cotangent in terms of sine and cosine as well. I'm going to clear this all off here. So cotangent can be rewritten as cosine divided by sine. Okay, I know, more memorization, but you guys need to memorize these. So flashcards, whatever you want, we will continue to have speed quizzes. I promise I will do my best to help you guys memorize these, but you need to memorize these. Okay, so let's put these into use. So why do we need to know all this? We need to show, in this problem right here, that cosine theta times 1 divided by secant theta equals cosine squared theta. Well, this one's pretty simple, just as long as you remember that secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So I can actually rewrite this knowing that 1 over secant theta from the previous slide equals cosine theta. So I'm going to substitute in cosine theta for my fraction right there. So that means I have cosine theta times cosine theta, and we want to show that that equals cosine squared theta. Now one thing to get into the habit as we start working these identities, you will not, you will never change your right hand side. You are going to leave this side alone. You are going to always manipulate your left hand side to get it to look like this side which is what we just did here. Okay, so we have cosine theta times cosine theta, and we want to say that that equals cosine squared theta. Well, that's true. This is just like if we had x times x equals x squared. x times x is x squared. So we have our identity that cosine squared theta equals cosine squared theta. And we have now shown that cosine theta times 1 over secant theta equals cosine squared theta. Okay, moving on to the next example. We have tangent theta times cosine theta equals sine theta. We need to show that this is true. So these are kind of like your proofs that you did earlier this year, but now we're just dealing with trig functions. Okay, remember, I said start thinking of tangent in terms of sine and cosine. So from our previous slide, we know tangent theta equals sine theta divided by cosine theta. And you guys may not have that fresh in your memory yet, but trust me, Within the next couple days, you'll know this like the back of your hand. Okay, so we're going to replace tangent theta in our left-hand side with sine over cosine. So when we do that, we have sine theta over cosine theta times cosine theta, and we're saying that that should equal sine theta. All right, we're going to simplify our left-hand side. Remember, we never change the right, just the left. We're multiplying fractions, so those can cancel and we are left with sine theta equals sine theta. Yay, we showed it. All right, moving on. I know I'm going through this quickly, but you guys can rewatch the video if you need to. More identities. Yes, there are more. So these are a little bit more complex. Okay, so we have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. I'm gonna go over the actual proofs of these in class. So right now, I just want you to see them for the first time. And you're not gonna have to ever prove these yourself, not in this class anyway. But I'm gonna show you in class why these are true. But you need to memorize them. I know, more memorization. So sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. Memorize it. One plus tangent squared theta equals secant squared theta. Memorize it. 1 plus cotangent squared theta equals cosecant squared theta. Memorize it. I know right now this is probably looking like a foreign language to you, but you need to memorize these because as we get on in the trig identities and showing things to be true, you're going to have to use all of these. Okay, and like I said, I will go over the proofs of these in class so that way you can kind of see why they are true, but as of right now, I just want you to memorize them. Okay, moving on. So we're going to use these identities. We need to show that one plus cosine theta times one minus cosine theta equals sine squared theta. Remember, we do not change your right hand side. That stays just like that. So we need to FOIL this out. When we FOIL this out, just like an algebra problem, we're gonna get one minus one times cosine theta is just cosine theta, negative cosine theta, plus cosine theta times one, so plus cosine theta, minus cosine theta times cosine theta is cosine squared theta. And that equals sine, we're saying that equals sine squared theta. 
Okay, so let's simplify. Those cancel. So we are left with one minus cosine squared theta equals sine squared theta. Okay, so now we get to use those identities from the previous page to help us here. So from the previous page, we had sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. We know that that will always be true. That is a known fact. It is true. So these are the only, the three identities from the previous page are the only ones that you can change the right hand side and the left hand side. So if I subtract cosine squared theta from both sides, I am left with sine squared theta equals one minus cosine squared theta. Well, that's perfect. I have a one minus cosine squared theta over here. I want it to become sine squared theta. And this identity right here tells me that one minus cosine squared theta does in fact equal sine squared theta. So I can substitute in sine squared theta for my one minus cosine squared theta. And when I do that, I end up with sine squared theta equals sine squared theta. Yay! We just showed that to be true. You can do the same thing with this equation. So one plus sine theta times one minus sine theta. So again, foil it all out. We get one minus sine theta plus sine theta minus sine squared theta. And that we're supposed to show equals cosine squared theta. Okay, simplify. We have one minus sine squared theta equals cosine squared theta. All right, looking up at our identity here, we can use this. So this is kind of your little side work. This is to help you solve the problem. All right, I see that I want to have one minus sine squared theta. So if I happen to subtract sine squared theta from this identity from both sides, I am left with cosine squared theta equals one minus sine squared theta. That's great. I can replace this with cosine squared theta right here. And when I do that, I have cosine squared theta equals cosine squared theta. I have shown that one plus sine theta times one minus sine theta does in fact equal cosine squared theta. So these are the very beginning basics of your trig identities and how you're gonna show and prove these to be true. They're going to get a lot more complex. So practice, practice, practice. Review this video if you need to. That is it for today. I know it's a lot and it's getting a little bit complicated, but please watch these videos, rewatch them, ask questions in class. I am here to help you. All right, have a good one. Bye-bye.